देवान भावयता नेना ते देवा भावयंतु वह परस्परम भावयंत श्रेय परम वाप्यथ देवान भावयता नेना ते देवा भावयंतु वह परस्परम भावयंत श्रेय परम वाप्यथ देवान गॉड्स भावयत नरिश यू अनेन विथ दिस ते धोस ते देवान धोस गॉड्स भावयंतू मे नरिश वह यू परस्परम वन अनदर भावयंतः नरिशिंग श्रेय गुड परम द हाइएस्ट अवाप्यथ शेलटेन अवाप्यथ शेलटेन विथ दिस यू डू नरिश द गॉड्स एंड मे दोज देवास नरिश यू दस नरिशिंग वन अनदर यू शेल अटेन द हाइएस्ट गुड ordinary commentators having made the hasty mistake of interpreting the term yagna in the previous stanza in its usual dictionary meaning as a vedic ritual are compelled to accept in this stanza meaning that the devas mean deities in the vedic period we all know that almost all the elemental forces were conceived as devas the whole vedic concept of devas is that of the one universal power ever active in the world of phenomena receiving appropriate names according to its multiple functions all vedic gods are but functional names of the one supreme creative power manifesting in mirrored forms in understanding the stanza in its more universal application we have to interpret the term deva as the very presiding deity in any field of activity who blesses the worker in that field with his profit the deity that blesses the worker in a field of activity can be nothing other than the productive potential in that given field when we apply our true and sincere work in any situation the efforts and sacrifices so made as it were invoke the productive potential in that situation which comes to manifest and bless the worker this becomes obvious when we try to understand what we in the modern world mean when we say mother india in this symbolizing the might of a nation we mean the productive potential of the country in all her spheres of activity it is obvious that the productivity that is dormant in any situation can be invoked only by man's sincere efforts this potential which generally lies dormant everywhere is the deva to be cherished by the worker through the yagna activities in certain day the deva will manifest itself to cherish or to bless the worker thus cherishing one another man shall gain the highest good is the divine intention in the mind of the creator says krishna in this stanza the law of seva is faithfully followed by every sentient and insentient member of the cosmos instinctively man alone is given the freedom to act as he likes and to the extent he disobeys the universal law of sacrifice yagna to that extent he comes to suffer because he with his arrogant and egoistic actions brings discord in the harmony of the existence around him So the big learning 
from a leadership perspective from this stanza is the law of seva or the law of sacrifice or making the best use of our current effort making the best possible sacrifice or effort to invoke the productive potential to give us the maximum profit as leaders i think we would have to nourish the members in our teams and they would nourish the team back by giving their best effort so truly understanding the dependency between various things within the teams between team members also between us and nature we will provide the best situation to make the best seva bhav in us all the time